Hello, this is Rodrigo from your class of pra principles and practice of clinical research. And this time we're going to talk about methods for blinding research participants, the when, the why, and how. We're going to uh, make specific comments in relation of what is blinding or masking, who can be blinded in clinical trials, the blinding levels and the terminology, what are the benefits of blinding in clinical trials, and which are the strategies for blinding accomplishment. Also, we're going to address several ethical issues and challenges of blinding and current clinical research. There are two important methods to avoid bias in clinical research. One is randomization, the other one is blinding or masking. In a successful blinding, both patients and caregivers shall not find a difference in either intervention, either experiment or control study participants group. Ignorance is a bliss in blinding clinical research. It will minimize the risk of bias and increase internal validity of the study. Every single human involved in clinical trials is, is subject to be blinded. Most, mostly blinding methods aim for subjects of study and clinicians, yet data collectors, outcome assessors, and even manuscript writers may be blinded for the purpose and bias risk assessment of the study. Blinding and masking may be used as synonyms, although masking is preferred when blindness per se is an outcome of interest in the study. Open-label trails are when participants and treating physicians are always aware of a group assignment. A well-conducted, randomized, controlled, blinded trail, where extension of study may allow for unblinding or open-label period to follow, as in crossover designs where extension period may allow group control to switch to active drug. Probe or prospective, randomized, open-label, open blinded endpoint design is where, when only endpoint assessors are blinded. So as you may see in this pyramid, the base of this prism refers to the basic and most frequent blinding of study participants, known as single blind trail. The more blinding of personnel during a clinical study, the, the more uh, um, internal validity that it will have. Some of the benefits of blinding in clinical trails, the first three concepts are regarding the participants blinding where it's less likely for psychological and physical bias response less likely to seek additional interventions and more adherence less likely to for the loss of follow-up less likely to withdraw participants within trial investigators blinding and less likely to have bias affect outcome assessments subjective to outcomes of interest within the assessors of the study some of the strategies for blinding accomplishment, well, considering there's a methodological uncertainty to assess blinding, there's an urgent need for improved methodology. Let's remember that placebo is a pharmacologic inactive agent. Therefore, the objective of placebos and blinding is so also the route of administration must be the same if it's possible, as in if it's a pill of placebo, we should try our best for an experimental pill and not experimental uh, topical uh, presentation or any other presentation that is different. If this is not possible, then we should try the double dummy design trail feasibility and we will talk about it further. It's very well recommended to, to create a blinding matrix throughout an electronic health record that is merged from the central trail teams to sites that is either controlled by sponsors or a third party that is previously uh, accorded to the, to the clinical trail. This will facilitate process of voluntary unblinding for participants. As well, we should establish an easy way or a direct line for contacting in case of unblinding of participants. There should be also a, check mon a checkpoint monitoring to assess blinding and if it is properly adhered. And also, it should be uh, prior to the beginning of the study, a planned standard operating procedure in case of blinding is inadvertently broken in order to assess and to be able to avoid the affection of sample size within the study. A double dummy design trail is suitable for whenever there is different prescription schemes 
among the experimental substance and the standard treatment or the placebo. Whenever there has to be a dose adjustment or there is an inconsistency within taste, color, or form, or a method of, of prescribing or administration, either one of the, of the substances, this design trail is recommended. In Professor Fregni's statistical and clinical research book, you may find this example of a double dummy design trail where dose titration was needed. And you can see how the initiation along the days in between the use of amitriptyline and gabapentin with placebo, they are, uh, the dosages adjusted according to the different days uh, along the study. And you can see it's highlighted how much and how was the, the how much of each of the of the substances and how it was divided by any of the participants that were within the protocol. Briefly, we're going to describe different ethical issues and challenges within blinding. An active placebo control is a placebo drug which mimics the mild adverse events of a particular experimental drug in the study, in order to seek a better blinding and decrease the probability for participants and clinicians to unblind the experimental drug due to its adverse events. This is controversial due to the focus of causing mild yet unnecessary non-desired events in either healthy or diseased participants. Also, blinding imp implant devices are quite challenging to pursue due to the invasive procedure of implantation and the conventional functions of the device. It has been proposed to create an artificial, non-functional device as a control in study participants. Sham surgeries are not only ethically controversial, since an invasive procedure with all the possible risks of complication will be executed in a participant, but also the blinding accomplishment is a challenge whenever the incision is not performed and unblinding may take place whenever the participant and clinician realize there is no trace of prior surgery. Salen's design is an alternative to some sham surgery where ethical controversy takes place as a group of participants shall keep on waiting for its turn to be intervened. Meanwhile, they are already being randomized as non-surgical controls of a study. The ethical principles and informed consent are still questionable, not to mention the power and methodology of the study. Finally, rehabilitation and acupuncture blinding, among many other interventions, are a challenge for ad adequate blinding, since control groups may easily identify the non-invasive procedures and follow up due to the therapeutic administration that requires physical employment and sensibility response. Well, this was a brief summary regarding blinding in clinical trials and studies. Please let me know any questions, any comments about the, the presentation. Uh, I hope you have liked it and thank you very much for, for watching. Have a nice day. This is Rodrigo. Cheers.